my name is Mike Aben and welcome to mission two of my KSP campaign. Today, Valentina Kerman is going to become our first Kerbal to escape the steely bounds of gravity. Well, not really, but she is making one heck of a hop that will carry her above an altitude of 70 kilometers and thus out of Kerbin's atmosphere. We've got two contracts that we'll be attempting to fulfill. One to escape Kerbin's atmosphere, and the other is to test the Mark 16 parachute while in flight over Kerbin. A piece of equipment that I obviously want to use anyway. If we take a closer look at the contract in the Contract Plus windows, you will notice that it has a specific speed and altitude range that I have to be in before deploying the parachute. And that range is fairly broad. I'm hoping I'll be into it on my way down when it comes time to deploy the parachute. Let's take a closer look at our vehicle. At the top, it features a sort of science slash communications module built around a modular girder segment, a tier one part that I'm using for the first time here. I'll get to everything in the SciComm module in a moment, but let's take a look at the other new features on the vessel. The booster is built from six FLT200 fuel tanks and is separated from the command pod by a TR18A stack decoupler. Pushing the whole thing up is an LVT45 swivel liquid fuel engine. Though heavier and less powerful than the similar LVT30 Reliant, I chose this engine for its gimbling, which allows you to direct the rocket nozzle slightly to enable steering while under thrust. A good thing, as the only other attitude control on this rocket are the reaction wheels in the command capsule. As always, the thrust has been tweaked to provide an appropriate thrust to weight ratio which you can learn more about by following the link. We'll pop into the VAB for a more detailed look. Providing the COM on the SciComm module is the Communitron 16S, an omnidirectional antenna specifically designed to withstand aerodynamic stresses and remain operational. It's here to transmit science, but it consumes 20 units of electricity per second doing it. That will drain the storage in the command pod in just two and a half seconds so I clearly have to be selective in how I use it. For that reason, I have aboard a total of six thermometers, one for each of the biomes I'll be passing through. If Valentina were capable of EVA, I could get away with only two, but alas, that requires upgrading the astronaut complex, which I have yet to do. Completing the science pack are two mystery goo canisters, which I have translated into the girder, sticking out just enough that I'll be able to easily click on them while in flight. This at least gives some illusion of aerodynamic smoothness. Down at the bottom, I have drained the bottom two tanks because I don't need that much fuel. You may well ask, then why have those tanks at all? They are there to greater separate the center of mass and the center of drag. The higher you can keep the center of mass and the lower the center of drag, the better your rockets are going to fly. If interested, you will find the craft file in the description. But with that done, let's return to the mission. During this ascent, I've been slightly pushing the vehicle to the east to ensure that I land in the water. It is a bit wayward. Some aerodynamic control surfaces sure would be nice here, but it is important not to pull yourself too far from the full grade vector on the navball. That will likely cause your rocket to flip around backwards. Oh, we're over 18 kilometers science time, so we'll transmit that crew report, and you can see the electricity going down up there. And then we'll keep the temperature scan and that goo report that I just did. But notice that the electricity is recharging. That is thanks to an alternator that is built into this engine. This engine is generating electricity for me. So, well... Okay, at least it was. <laughs> While the engine is running, it generates electricity for me, but I've just run out of fuel. So now I can no longer generate any electricity. But that's uh, one of the other reasons I went for this. The Reliant engine also generates electricity, but I was honestly thinking early on of just going with an SRB. The big back SRB can get this thing into a suborbital trajectory very, very easily, but unfortunately doesn't generate electricity and I knew for that one crew report I would want to transmit it. I've also collected science in three of my six thermometers, though I'm not transmitting that. 
Uh, one you just saw me do, and I did one on the launch pad and one just shortly after takeoff, which would be flying above the shores. And as we are just about, there we go. We are now above 70 kilometers. We are in space. So I'm going to do another crew report. Not going to transmit that one because I want to conserve my electricity. Do a mystery goo and do one more of those thermometers. We can now get rid of those windows. For science that I've collected. That leaves two more thermometers. Those are being saved for our trip down and for after splashdown. We've also completed one of our two contracts. We have escaped the atmosphere, so we can delete that one from our window. We'll get the other one hopefully on our way down. But right now, Valentina, I think she's just going to enjoy this being in space here for, well, a couple of minutes probably is all it's going to be. We are still on our way up, but it's not going to last too much longer. We are approaching our apoapsis after which point we'll be on our way back down. And uh, I'm going to have to ditch the booster here. And what I like to do is turn myself normal. That is perpendicular to the plane of my trajectory. There's the Kerbal Space Center far below us. Because that will eject that booster out of my flight path. So there'll be absolutely no way that I'll run into it again. <laughs> There we go. No need hanging on to that. And you may have noticed in the interior here, these enhanced interior views. These three extra screens are being provided by raster prop monitor. The screen on the left is providing a graph of my altitude versus time. The center screen is providing some mission information like time, position, some other basic vessel stats. And finally, the rightmost screen are my resources which aren't much right now that my uh, booster is gone. A little later in the tech tree, I'll unlock an external camera that you can attach to your ship so that you'll get external views from outside your ships, which is pretty cool. And, as, and actually, as you unlock other features, there are other information you can feed towards these screens. We are most certainly on our way down now. If you take a look at the electric charge, you'll notice that it is holding steady now. That's because I turned off the SAS once I was finished orienting the capsule the way I wanted it. I've kept the velocity on the nav ball relative to the surface so that I have that retrograde surface vector there so I can orient the craft so that when I go into the atmosphere it's already oriented the way I want. It's pretty darn close now. Aerodynamic forces will keep it directed the right way. So all I do is all I need to be is close and there we go. We have just crossed into the atmosphere. So we are going to be, well, we're still falling, so we're speeding up that way. But the event, the atmosphere is slowly starting to add drag and will eventually begin to slow us down, which, of course, is going to create some shock heating. I don't have a heat shield on this thing. But uh, as we're not falling from orbital type velocities, uh, the heat shield really isn't necessary. Once you start getting into coming in at orbital velocity, you probably are going to need a heat shield, but uh, Valentina is going to be fine. There we go, the worst is over now. And remember, I still got to do this final contract here, but I can't deploy that parachute till everything is green. The altitude needs to be between 1 and 9 kilometers. My speed needs to be between 120 and 300 meters per second. My speed is decreasing rapidly, getting close to 300. There it is, and now it's just waiting to get under nine kilometers. There we go, deploy, and contract complete. Excellent. We can now get rid of that. Get rid of the whole mission contract plus window. Okay, we got a temperature scan to do, so keep that one. Last one's going to be for after splashdown. Ooh, according to X Science, I can do a crew report. But of course, I have a crew report in there. Okay, let's review that. Let's. I. Th I think I have enough electricity. Let's transmit this. Yep, just enough. Okay, let's do another crew report. There we go. So there's a crew report flying over the water. And all that's left to do now 
is to wait for our splashdown. Oh, and there go our parachutes. This is actually a lighter vessel than the vessel you saw last episode, so uh, it should have no trouble surviving its impact. And here comes that splashdown. Excellent. Okay, we'll get that last temperature scan from the water. No point doing an EVA because uh, Jeb had already done an EVA in the water. So that's going to be it. So we shall recover. And upon recovery, we find that we had collected a total of 56.3 science for a total of 87 science. I also completed my contracts, the Mark 16 parachute and to escape the atmosphere. And we got a few more world firsts. We got altitude records of seven kilometers, 22 kilometers and 70 kilometers, a speed record of 790 meters per second, distance records of 10 kilometers and 32 kilometers. And we have reached space for the first time. Getting on into the Research and Development Center and looking at the tech tree. Well, went for stability and survivability. Those two seem pretty obvious ones to go for pretty quickly. That gets me a nose cone, some bigger tail fins, and some radial decouplers. That'll be nice. And survivability gets me heat shields. I am going to need that if I'm going to be coming in from orbit. Barometer for more science, a radiator, small landing gear, radial parachutes, and a little service bay. That'll come in handy. And then, in the next tier, I decided to go with basic science. Yeah, I'm going to stay to the bottom and go for science. That gives me the Stay Putnik Pro Body. Some batteries. Oh, I really want those. Materials Bay for more science. The Experimental Storage Unit. That's new with 1.2. I haven't had a chance to play with that, so that'll be fun. Some more radiators and this very cool high-gain antenna. And I now have enough cash to be able to upgrade my first building, and I'm going for the astronaut complex. It cost me 112,500 curb bucks, but now my Kerbals can do EVAs when they are off of Kerbin's surface. And after picking up a couple of more contracts, which you'll see me attempt next episode, I still have 166,579 curb bucks, which I can put towards my next mission. That's going to have to be for the next episode. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.